Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jess and today we're going to be talking about basically going into A-levels and my experience and my advice to you if you're, you know, if you've just finished your IGs and you're going into A-levels. What I can tell you from my experience, what I think I should have known or I should have taken into account better at the time. So yeah, I don't even know what I'm going to title this video yet, but you guys have seen what it is. It's basically about that. So I did my IGCSEs um, May, June 2019 and I did pretty decently and then I went into my A-levels where I picked biology, chemistry, math and music technology. So biochem math was with Cambridge and music, music technology was with Edexcel. I chose biochem math because I want to go on to do medicine. Hopefully I'm still not 100% sure how that's all going to work out, but that's where I'm headed right now. That's why I chose those subjects. So number one, what I'd want to tell you guys if you're going from your IGCSEs into A-levels is that your IGs are very different from your A-levels. And I know you hear this all the time from so many people saying that your A-levels are a lot harder, but when you're in your IGCSE years, you don't realize how much harder your A-levels are going to be. You, I'm, I'm really, really, really telling you, don't be arrogant, don't be arrogant. I was slightly arrogant and I thought, it's fine, my, I'm, I had it down in my IGs that I knew what I was doing. At A-levels, at A-levels it's gonna be, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be easy. I was wrong, <laughs> I was very wrong. My A-levels were a lot harder for me. I had to adjust my learning style, I had to adjust so many things because it's so different. You want to pick subjects for your A-levels that you love, but also ones that you're good at. Just because you love math, but you didn't score that well in your IGCSEs doesn't mean you should take it at A-levels. Yes, there of course there are those situations where you do do better at your A-levels than you did at your IGCSEs, but I would urge you to pick something that you're good at, not just something that you love. Let's say you're good at English, take it, you know, take it at A-levels. If you're good at your stuff at your IGCSEs, that gives you, it gives you a better foundation um, for your A-levels than if you weren't that good or that confident. Now, if you really, really, really want to do, I don't know, business at A-levels, but you didn't do that well at IGCSEs, if you really, really, really are willing to work at your A-levels for that, then take it. But you have to have the passion and the ability to do the subject, not just one of them. If you think that you're really good at a subject, but you don't like it, doesn't mean you have to take it at your A-levels. You have to pick something that you're passionate about. If you don't like English, but you scored an A star in your IGCSEs, don't take English because you're probably not gonna like it. And if you don't like your A-level subjects, I mean, a lot of people don't, <laughs> I mean, but it makes your experience a lot less enjoyable. Another thing that I'd want you to know, this isn't the case for all people, but I would say it's something that people don't really think about, that your A-level subjects your classes are going to be different in the way that people chose to be there, which means that they are probably decently good at them. So if you're going into a class of, let's say 10 students, I know I go to a really small school, I have like two students in every class, but I'm, I'm giving you a hypothetical. You had an IGCC class of let's say 25, 30 people. Now you're going into a math class of seven. With those seven people, they're probably gonna like math and they're probably gonna be good at, good at it and work for it. So if you're used to being in your IGCC class and you know, really being at the top of it or like thinking that yeah, I have this down, know that your A-level um, classmates are probably also gonna have it down. So you're not gonna be, you're not gonna be that unique. Saying it in the case if you were really good at your IGCSEs. So yeah, I mean, I didn't have that too much because it's just me and Mary in biology, chemistry and math. So there wasn't that much to change, but it, I definitely felt it in the way that there were, no, there were no people struggling, like really struggling in the class which I'm not saying I needed that, but it does make you feel like, okay, I have this down because other people don't have it as down as me, you know? So I know, that it, I know that sounds bad, but it's a mentality that a lot of people don't really address where it's like, if you are not the bottom of the class, at least you know you're not the bottom. But when it's just you and everyone else is good as well or decently good, then you can quickly be at the bottom, which isn't really the bottom, which can really affect you like mentally as well. Another thing that you need to know going into your A-levels is that just because you have less subjects doesn't mean that you're gonna have more time. I really thought, I really thought I was gonna have more time <laughs> and I'm really laughing at myself right now because if I did, I did 14 subjects for my IGCSEs. Now I knew I was gonna take four for my AS and I thought this is gonna be easy. This is gonna be simple, four. Nah, I have this down, freeze everything, I got it. I'm telling you, 
it's not the case it's not like that when you go into your a-levels you realize that the reason why you take so few subjects is because the subjects that you take go so in depth the amount of content that you covered for one subject in IGCSEs you cover that more than twice in your AS year and your A-level year. So there's a lot of content and there's a lot of things you need to learn. So just thinking that you have less subjects and you're gonna have more time, it's just really wrong. You shouldn't have that type of mentality. Go into your A-levels thinking, you're gonna have to study more than you did for IGCSEs. You're gonna have to be more focused. You're gonna have to have a better schedule because it is that much harder. This is of course my experience with the sciences. I'm not too sure about English and history and all these other things because I didn't take them. But with the sciences, that was definitely the case. Another thing that I would say I personally struggled with going into my A-levels sciences again is that for IGCSEs up to that point in my life, I I was I am very passionate about the sciences. I have always been. I read books about science and I watch documentaries and all these things. So I always had I had a well-rounded general view of the sciences and I could answer things pretty quickly and because I knew the subject I knew the subject matter now when I got into A levels I'm getting into this new territory where I've never heard of these things before I've never heard about the Krebs cycle I've never heard about I don't know all these other things I can't think about them off the top of my head but I hadn't studied about them or heard about them in a movie or in anything else so I had to learn stuff from scratch from the bottom up and that was something I personally wasn't used to because I already had a foundation from my primary years from some of my secondary years so grade 7 grade 8 I had the foundation to build up from an IGCC so I thought that was a lot easier now for A levels your IGCCs give you an idea but they don't give you the foundation you have to go back and relearn that foundation. I definitely, definitely felt that with chemistry a lot, where there were so many things that I just knew at IGCCs, oh, like this has to be like that. But then at A levels, it was like, oh, I have to learn why it's like that. And then I'm like, okay, I need to know all these different details and th these different parts that build the foundation up to the actual point of the, <laughs> of the question. So it was, it is still very difficult for me because I have to really go into this go into the subject thinking I'm gonna learn from scratch not from what I already know this is this is gonna be new so yeah that's basically a really general thing that I thought I would want to share with you guys that you really have to I would say take these points into account when you're going into your A-levels whatever it could be IB or whatever other higher level of studying that you're gonna do but also just know that it is quite interesting if you're picking things that you like it's gonna be interesting because you're gonna learn about these things that you never even thought about or thought or you start, you're gonna start making connections. Like, oh, that's why that's like that, or this is why that's like that. And it is beautiful in its own way. For me, it's not easy. I don't know how it's gonna be for you. You might be a genius, but for me, it was definitely not easy. It is not easy. I still have to do my A-levels um, this year. I'm in year 13 right now. So I'm definitely struggling, but I am gonna make it through it. So are you, because so many others have made it through it. And if we're just vigilant and study, and you know, look for help our teachers are there for help students are there for help use the people around you please use the people around you i am such a big student learner i learn really well when i'm discussing with students around me and that's something that really negatively impacted me about my school because we're so few i don't have that student body around me to support me to bounce ideas off of if you have a class that's above five or even five that's at least those are minds that you can put together and work on a past paper if it's just me and a friend of mine mary we can't really we don't have that much brain power to really go through our past paper but if there's five of you you can really you know do that thing <laughs> definitely if you have a bigger class use that to your advantage use your teachers they're there they're being paid to help you so <laughs> use them just really quickly before we go just closing it off i'm just going to give you a few um pointers for the subjects that i took chemistry biology and math so for chemistry something that i will tell you is very and this is very very important the chemistry textbook does not give you all the information it doesn't give you all the, the information and this is very important listen to me so if you're writing your notes or you're reading about a, a subject matter in AS, don't just stop there. Your textbook is like half of what you, okay, not half, that's exaggerating. It's like three quarters of what you actually need to know. There's other things that go into the into the topic that aren't gonna be in the, in the textbook. A website that really helped me out was chemrevise.co.org org i think yeah that's what it was it's basically this guy who he's amazing i don't know who he is but thank you <laughs> he was so great i still use him today he kind of makes notes of all the topics 
and you can really read through those and they go so in depth of in like so many things that you need to know that your textbook doesn't point out to you that the, the exam just ex expects you to know so he really 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 points this out for you and I would say definitely use the website I didn't really like navigating it because you have to you know go to the contents and then go back and whatever but at the end of the day I had to get over it and just learn how to use it now there's another one that was quite good oh no no hold on was it came guide or chem revise so there's two <laughs> there's two websites there's chem guide and chem revise I'm gonna link them both in the description the what I've just talked about is chem guide not chem revise so but they're both very good chem revise gives you a condensed version of the chemistry notes that you can put into flashcards they're very very good as well the chem revise notes I have them all here yes so I did make that mistake so here this is my folder it's a folder that I have I basically went onto chem revise and just downloaded all the topics that they had basically it's like a summary of the topic and it just gives you like the key points and it can like sometimes highlight things that you really need to know so these are the two resources that I really did use now for biology I would say the textbook is quite good I haven't really found anything outside of the textbook that gives me a lot of information about the topic so definitely just reading your textbook and knowing the content that's in there and pay attention to the smaller parts even if something is not highlighted it doesn't mean it's not gonna come so definitely pay attention and read your chemistry I mean read your biology textbook like a book just like read it you're about to go to bed read a couple pages you know just like get familiar with your content because they are gonna ask you about so many steps and things it's biology is a mind game you just gotta remember things you gotta remember things and know how to answer so definitely past papers and reading your textbook now for math, this one is a bit difficult for me. Math has always not been something that, that comes naturally to me. I had to practice a lot. Definitely use your resources on YouTube. This is for all the subjects really. Use your resources. Khan Academy is amazing. Again, I'll link all the stuff in the, in the description below. For math, past papers, 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 past papers. <laughs> that is it. You just need to know how to do the questions and just do them all from like 2000 and well, I don't know 10 to 2019 all of them all codes do them I hope that that kind of gave you a summary of what to expect for your A-levels and some resources to use if you're doing the sciences like I am and just remember that even though it seems daunting and a lot of us speak about A-levels like oh my gosh it's so hard and blah, 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 it's still gonna be a good experience and I hope that you can make the best out of what you have and that you're ready to you know do the work for your grades you know the people before you could do it so can you and so can I and that's the mentality that I want to go into the next year to do my exams hopefully COVID doesn't stop the exams again because that would be really bad <laughs> if you're new here don't forget to subscribe come on like I do so many other things and just I do CAC videos <laughs> have a great day night evening or morning wherever you are and I will see you next time bye <laughs>